Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Kaga, and welcome to War Thunder Wednesdays. So, this video is... You know, it... There's a few subjects to this one, and the first being is... That random person that you will get... Well, sometimes get squadroned up with when you're flying War Thunder. Now, you don't have any real control over it when it happens, because, you know, the matchmaker says, you know what, you need a buddy. And sometimes, they're crap. Most of the time, you don't even know they're there. But I'm going to tell you, occasionally, you do notice them. They're very much a part of your gameplay. They're very much a part of what you should be expecting people to do and when you get them you keep asking yourself well why aren't the rest of the community like this and I don't miss mean you know what they're gonna form up they're gonna fly together because that's not real what you can expect from a lot of people I mean that person that when you do wind up in the same section of sky can you it's almost like you two have been flying together forever you can kind of expect more or less what the other's going to do and it just breeds this natural combat with one person coming up setting up a kill and the other person coming in finishing it off or vice versa and it's just a really wonderful experience and I'm bringing this up because this was one of those matches and I swear I have been longing for somebody like this for a while now but we're gonna start off and because you know what this is War Thunder Arcade we're gonna just go ahead and chase the easy kills not really worry too much about flying in formation I really didn't pick up that this was gonna be one of those guys that I'd want to um, fly that close to for a bit until you know a few minutes into this battle but what we're, just to go over this particular plane, just because maybe those of you who are not familiar with it, this is the Sea Hurricane. I believe this is the 1B? But this is the one, the first one that has the all 20mm package in the wings for a total of four 20mm can Hispano cannons. Oh man, these things are a breath of fresh air after 7.7mm goodness that has been the British uh, tech line up to this point and you know what <clears throat> 7.7's have no place on aircraft in rank well not just battle rank 2 but in tier 2 in, as well unfortunately that one didn't last that long me sad I like that plane so we're going to hop into a Spitfire because you know what, we got plenty of them. And you know, the Spitfire for all of its 7.7mm faults has a whole lot of 7.7mm faults that can somehow produce something quite special. And I think this one has what, like a total of 12 of these 7.7mm uh, machine guns mounted in, in the wings and oh boy can they cut loose. But you know, when it back to the subject is is that you know part of that is um, knowing when to spot an opportunity that an ally creates and other parts it's making the opportunity happen and you know part of that is your own greed part of that is the greed of your your allies and making the most of it yeah I know <laughs> make use of greed thought we were supposed to control it well anyway second part of this uh, little video is making use of terrain I love making use of the terrain given to me by the game it I don't know what it is it's um it's just fun you know and now I, I know I can't do that in upper tiers as much because the the planes are not as turny. Um, they don't they're not really intended to turn the same way lower tier ones are. 
So a lot of the maneuvers you're still gonna see me do, do not try it in anything that can like mid tier three aircraft and up. Don't even try this stuff. You, you, if you're do, doing it all the time up there, you're doing it wrong. Well, I mean, not really that if you're doing it all the time, but if this is your primary bag of tricks at upper tier, most planes will not like that. The only exception I can think of are the zeros and anything that are as low altitude turn fighter goodness as they are. But most of them by mid tier three have progress towards energy fighting but you know what this is a low tier spitfire so it will do this it, it'll lose a lot of speed doing it but it will still do it and one of the benefits of this type of turn fighting is you know you're unpredictable a predictable enemy is a dead enemy dead enemy is good for an ally, but if you're the dead enemy, well, that's bad for your allies. <laughs> Sorry to make that all complex, but you know what? That's just the nature of combat. Now, I swear, there are moments in this um, replay where I wonder whether the tracers coming over my head or over the head of my pilot are enemy tracers or allied tracers and I make that open ponderance because we all know how arcade battles are this is the land of mine 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 but you know what actually I think that was enemy tracer fire there's that p51 that that could have been them but anyway, I digress. Back to the whole part of aerial tactics. If you see an ally valiantly holding off against four, five, six, maybe even as many as eight enemy fighters, is it really the smart thing to dive in after them to help him? Or should you just consign him to the scrap heap? Well, if you're fighting smart and you're trying to look after the number of planes that your allies have in the air, you probably don't want to dive in there. Now that sounds a little cold. It sounds really cold. I'll admit it, it sounds really cold. But at the same time, if, you're, if your ally is really that outnumbered, does it make sense to make like those enemies that really dived in there that way that you saw just to fight a losing battle two on eight. Oh yeah and by the way that guy back there I just zoomed in on was, was my wingmate just for reference great man he was great man to fly with but yeah does it really make sense to dive in that way does it really make sense to keep committing one or two planes at a time against a giant enemy furball no, 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 disengage, wait for them to make the mistakes, don't be the ones to make the mistake. And I swear, that that tracer fire down there is really reeking with my mind, playing havoc with me. I'm pretty certain that he's aiming at me, I'm pretty certain about that. It's getting a little close to me and a little far from that P-51 to be aiming at the P-51. Oh boy. But that being said, this is arcade battle, so... Nope, nope, that's definitely for me. Wow, this person really loves using up their ammunition on me. <laughs> oh boy. I really wonder what they're thinking with that. But you know what, we'll dive out of the way. And that's one of the things that I am kind of big on when it comes to um, flying in this game, is that speed is life and altitude is choice. 
Though that being said, that means that you doesn't mean that you should fly straight up at your enemies. Unless they're flying straight up. But, um, you know, that... That's one of the mistakes I see a lot of people do, is that in an, a, an attempt, a rather vain attempt, mind you, to try to gain altitude faster, what they do is they put it their aircraft into a 60, 70, even 80 degree pitch upwards. And what you do is you're exchanging all of your speed for a small amount of altitude when perhaps the better quick ascent uh, vector is along, you know, maybe 20 or 25 degrees. Sometimes you have to do more than that, but you will slow down a lot. And you will just make yourself a nice big target. And I, w I welcome you when you're flying against me. Make yourself a big, big flying target. I like that. But it's not a very good way to progress in this game. So I must also caution you against doing it all the time. We will all make mistakes. The key to victory in arcade battle is making the fewest mistakes possible. Yeah, I know that sounds weird. Minimize your mistakes. But I still welcome you to make them if you're flying against me because... <laughs> I want to win. And I'm certain you want to win too, so you're going to just go ahead and tell me to make as many mistakes as possible. They Head-on collision. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, guys. Okay. You can keep doing that suicidal jousting crap. I want no part of it. As you can see right there. Yeah, I want no part of that. Cannon fire in the nose. No thank you. No thank you. I know that a lot of people like doing that. I'm not fond of it because I've got one engine and one pilot. Losing either, not good bedfellow. A very not good bedfellow. If you've been paying very close attention, if you remember that person that I've highlighted as the wingmate I had through the entirety of this match, and you'll notice that you saw him quite often, and that was no real accident there. The fact that you saw him there at all, I could get, say, go ahead, give yourself a pat on the back, grab a cookie, and you know what? You're better than a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> because you notice that one person who really and truly is just always there for you. They're rare in gaming. They should be treasured when you find them. Hope that you can find another match with them and you're in a position to support them or they're in a position to support you because more times than not, that is the difference between winning and losing. So to that nice, wonderful person who was my wingmate, thank you. Now, I know that I've been blathering on just about any topic I can think about for the last almost 14 minutes at this point. So I'd like to want now thank you, the viewer, for having bared with me for this moment in time. And now I welcome you to turn the comment section of this video into your personal arena to regale all of us with your stories of... That one person you met in a random match, doesn't matter whether it's War Thunder, World of Tanks, World of Warships, Armored Warfare, whatever have you, that was the ultimate bro or sis in all of these affairs and fulfilled that role for you. So please take a few minutes, go ahead, write up that wonderful story and share it with us all. If you happen to like the video, please consider giving it a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. War Thunder Wednesdays is a weekly phenomenon. It can range from anything from arcade air battles to tank RB and air RB. I'm not quite so confident in my sim battle abilities to consider flying a sim event for you all so <laughs> you'll have to pardon me if that's not on the agenda well I also don't have nearly enough planes to do that <laughs> yeah sorry sorry about that it's just 
I need to do more work in the grind in that respect. Oh yeah, and speaking of grind, I do plan on doing some more grinding in War Thunder with the imminent release of the patch 1.57 and all those wonderful new planes and vehicles being introduced into the game, some of which I'm more excited for than others. Hopefully I can get some good content of those as soon as I can get up to them. Hopefully it'll be an RB content because, you know, everybody likes RB content more so than arcade battle content. Anyway, thank you for having listened to me blather on yet another few minutes. I would like to thank you for having stuck with me. I hope to see you around the channel in the future. More content this week to include World of Warships and to continue our other segments as we come along and maybe introduce some new ones as opportunity presents itself. As it has become customary for me to do this, I'd once again like to thank you and bid you good day.